For the art of spray paint, you're going to require different colors of spray paints, different sizes of straight edges, everyday household items like cups or lids, but more importantly, your mask. My name is Arturo Spraycaso, and I created Spraycaso Studios back in 1999. I've then began teaching people how to create amazing masterpieces using nothing more than just spray paints and everyday household items. The beauty of this art is that it doesn't require you to have a steady hand or know how to draw, just a little bit of imagination and some dedication. So join me, and you too can become a Spray Castle Master. And together we'll walk through diverse techniques of creating beginner level paintings, intermediate level paintings, advanced level paintings, and we'll take your skill even further to master level paintings. So if you're ready to embark into a new art adventure, grab your spray paints and materials, let's get started. Hey crew and welcome back to another Spray Castle tutorial. All right, so let's start with the background layer. This is gonna be the sky and we're gonna use light layers of blue. This is light blue. Now, because we are using a canvas, I like to get the edges. So you, this may require for you to lift up the canvas and just make sure you cover the edges. Some people are picky about it, others aren't. Uh, you know, I could go either way. All right, so I'm just gonna spray a little bit of black here using the soft tip spray castle tool. I'm gonna begin creating a background layer. Okay, this is very simple to do. And it also gives you a lot of detail. So once again, we already tapped into some black. We're just gonna create the outline of our terrain. This is gonna be a waterfall. So I know what I want to be in my background. And using the soft tip tool, I'm just gonna come around here, around the edges and smear down. Now notice what I'm doing. As soon as I tap onto their canvas, put a little bit of paint, I smear downwards. Okay, I'm gonna do the same right over here. This could possibly be two peaks, or it could be part of the same rock that's being carved out by the water. It can basically be pretty much anything you can imagine. That's one of the beauties about spray painting is how versatile it is and how easy it is to blend with other colors with itself. This allows you a greater range of creativity, be able to create different rock terrains, pretty much anything you can imagine. All right, let's take a closer look at what we've created so far. I'm gonna use a little bit of white. I'm not gonna go into great depth with color because this is gonna be a background uh, layer. It's not gonna have a whole lot of detail, just enough detail to illustrate that there's detail, but not a whole, whole lot because I am gonna cover most of it up. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of white and this is gonna blend with the colors that we already put underneath, the blues and the blacks. And when you start smearing downwards with the tool, they're gonna blend and it's gonna give you that moving water effect. See, very easy to do. Now here I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to our white uh, using the soft tip tool, I'm just going to mix it real well and then I'm just going to go on top of it and add a hint of color. I'm just going to go up and down a couple of times. It's still blending with the colors underneath. Just like this. Now, you don't want to do this with the hard tip spray castle tool. The soft tip tends to get the colors and blend them together. Look at that. Okay, just going to tap into some white All right, and a little bit of blue now we already have light blue but when you mix it with white it gets even lighter so I'm just gonna tap into it and I'm just gonna create the effect of water here on the bottom now it's okay that we start overlapping some of the uh, silhouette terrain and silhouette rocks that we created in the background this will also give us an effect a reflective effect so this could possibly be the rocks underneath the water or it could be the the rocks that are on top reflecting from the water top I'm just gonna get into a little bit of black and we're gonna put just a little rock here overlapping our water I'm gonna do the same to this side a little bit of black and look at that just like that just gonna tap into it all right, 
Now you want to make sure you cover some of the, the blue sp spots that I had on the background from our background layer. Okay. All right, let's add a little bit of splash on the water. The way we're going to do this is by using our straight edge. I'm going to aim not directly onto the painting, but right on the top, right about here. And what that does, it creates a nice little reflective line. So it's, it's defined, yet it still has a lot of mist-like qualities to it. This is great for uh, water lines, water splashes, uh, even some clouds. I'll show you that later in some later tutorials. I'm going to spray a little bit of black here using the soft tip spray castle tool. Just going to come over here and continue working on our silhouette layer. That is our terrain. That is the rocks that we've been creating here. Just going to make it a little more defined. A little bit bigger. Okay, just going to smear downwards. Now once I get to the bottom level, notice how I start moving the tip, the soft tip tool to the left and to the right and just kind of smearing that together. And that gives us a very realistic looking effect for our water. Now using our white, we're just going to create a nice mist effect. So we are spraying directly onto the painting, but we have a lot of movement going on so we don't just spray on one area. I'm adding a little bit on the top here because this is going to be what I imagine to have some a light source coming down onto this rock. So we want to make our background layer and then we want to blend it in with some white. All right, now I'm going to use a little bit of clear coat and this is going to be used right where our water is. Using the soft tip tool, I'm going to go back and I'm going to retouch certain areas of this water. I don't want to lose the details that we have on the water because this water is going to be coming towards us. So we still want to have some of that detail. All right, now using one of the, the spray paint brushes, I'm going to tap into some white and I'm going to start working on the highlights. Now this is very easy to do. You can use regular brushes. It won't work as well uh, because after a couple of uses, the brushes get really hard and really, really hard to manipulate. And the, the spray paint brushes are very easy to clean, very easy to manipulate. So we created some highlights. I'm going to use a little bit of black. And we're going to start working on a new piece of terrain. Now this is closer to it. Remember, the rule of thumb is the closer it gets to us, the darker the colors become. The more detailed it gets. So I'm going to work on the outline first and then we're going to fill it in. Now notice that it also overlaps the layer that we've been working on. You want this. This will give a lot of uh, depth to your painting. All right, so now that we've done that, once again, I'm going to spray right about here. And I'm just doing this to create the effect of light rays coming through. Uh, this could be a little bit of that water mist as well. OK. Now remember, you don't want to lose the detail on your water. Now the water is coming from this waterfall in the background and as it gets closer to you, to you it gets more detail. So I'm just going to use a little bit of clear coat and make sure that I define the water better. Using the soft tip tool, I'm coming through and now this piece of land is bigger than the one behind it. So I'm able to use the broader tip from the tool to create the rocky texture. And it's okay if you overlap some of the rays that you worked on. You can always go back and add a couple more, just as I did here. Okay, now we're going to make some, some more defined rays here using a straight edge and a little bit of white. Now notice it's quick sprays. I'm not trying to make very cartoon-like rays. I want it to have a very ambient feeling to it. So it's quick bursts. I'm really enjoying the way this is looking. Uh, you can still see a lot of the detail from the background. You see the waterfall, you see the mist on the bottom, you see how the water waves are coming to you. Um, and then you still see, you still manage to see the detail on the rocks right here. Now using a little bit of black, I'm going to do the same thing that we did before on our second terrain. And I'm going to add a third one. 
Now, Rumei, it's okay. You do want it to overlap some of the stuff that you've created. Perhaps not completely cover it up, but you do want it to overlap. Now, notice how this painting is starting to uh, get a little more definition on the depth. You're starting to see how things, as they're getting closer to us, they're getting darker and a little more detailed. All right, I'm just mirroring some of this paint downward. This is the same technique that I use for uh, creating reflections on the water. All right, now when you get to the edges here, what I like to do is I just use a little bit of black and just blend it all in together. This also covers the edges of your canvas. All right, I'm just coming in, messing with the water a little bit more. Uh, you can add some clear coat if this begins to dry. The clear coat will keep it moist and you'll be able to manipulate the paint in the manner that we're doing here. Uh, take a look at that. Very vivid. You can see the light reflecting on the waves on top. You can see the mist. There's definitely a lot of detail and as you've noticed guys, it was very easy to do. Now what makes a painting more advanced or intermediate is the amount of layers that you add to it. This is going to be an advanced painting as we're adding different depth layers. We're adding a lot of detail, a lot of highlights. Our water are very realistic. Okay, I'm just going to create another piece of terrain. Once again, getting closer to us. And there you go. Magic. Okay, now I'm going to work on the highlights. And the way I do that, in this case, I do want to have some color. But before I do that, notice how easy it is to clean the soft tip tool. All you need is a little rag or a paper towel. And there you have it. I'm going to mix a little bit of this orange with some black. And that will give us a... Can anybody tell me? Well, it'll give us either a dark orange or a brown, which is basically the same thing. So we're just gonna tap here on the edges. I don't want to overpower the entire terrain with orange or brown. I just want to do the edges of these rocks. This will give us the illusion that there's a lot of detail right here, but there's still quite a few dark areas where the sun is not hitting it. Easy to manipulate. All right, once again, if you don't want to contaminate your paint, you just give your tool a clean. What's contamination? Well, contamination is if you get yellow and a little bit of blue, you know, the, the color is going to become green. So you don't want these color schemes to happen. Using our blue and our handy dandy straight edge, I'm going to create some water. Now this is not going to be as detailed as the water that we had in the background. This is more calmed waters, a little more reflective. You can see the colors from the sky on them. And I'm going to use a little bit of white. The white I'm going to use just a quick spray on the edges and this will separate our terrain from our water. And just like that. Now I'm just going to add a little more, a couple of lines reflecting the sky from above. And it's all coming together very easily, right guys? A couple sprays of white, maybe a little bit of blue. And you can see how the water starts to take shape. I'm just gonna spray some white and some blue and our soft tip tool. I'm gonna create a small waterfall here. I wasn't sure at first uh, I was gonna make this huge waterfall, you know, appear closer to us, but the more I thought about it, I think that a waterfall of this size would probably be a little more inviting to the painting. You want the viewer to see themselves, you know, uh, visiting this painting, standing right next to it. Uh, rather than if I were to make this ginormous waterfall, perhaps they wouldn't have been so invited to, you know, to spend some time in your painting, in your realm. Now, notice how I'm doing this. I'm also using the paints to blend with the colors that I added below. So you remember, you have a light layer of blue under this. So whenever you're mixing your white and your blue, it's moistening those layers underneath, and they're becoming active. So you're able to see 
the white blend with the colors below, the blue as well, and it'll give you different shades of those colors. Let's take a closer look. Now to define different types of waterfalls, you can use a little bit of white in this manner. Now notice you can make it very thin lines or you can add broad white lines to it. All very good for creating different effects on your waterfalls. I like to blend mine together so that it looks like there's a little more water running through. It gives it a little more action to your painting. All right, I'm just gonna smear these colors downwards. Right about here. Yeah. I have a couple of friends that live in Canada and they're always sending me pictures. And this is more or less what I imagine a Canadian landscape to look like. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I, I was told that a couple of friends say it reminded them of uh, Lord of the Rings. I don't know. It's your imagination. If you guys think it reminds you of something, drop me a line. Let me know. All right? Now notice I just created the outline and then I filled in the space with our black. This is going to have a little more detail later on. I am going to put a little bit, uh, some plants coming out. Okay, I'm just using a little bit of blue. And my straight edge. And I'm covering some of the areas that had negative space on them. What's negative space? It is your canvas, just a plain white canvas. Now using the same technique that we did above, to create the mist on the waterfall. I'm using my straight edge to bounce paint off of it. This is going to create the effect of mist, water lines, sun reflections. It's very handy. I definitely recommend that you guys practice this technique. Alright, now using some black and our soft tip tool, I'm just going to create a small rock here. Now we're just creating a silhouette of it first. And this will give us a nice placement so that we know exactly where it's going to be. I usually like to set up all my silhouette terrains first and then go back and start adding the highlights. So we're just going to do one here. Perhaps we can do some in the background. Maybe one right about here. I, I don't like to have a very straight line where the water connects or meets the ground. So I like to break it up and the way I do that is I create a piece of land that's further down, maybe just a little bit. All right, uh, we're going to clean our tool here. And we're going to smear this, the colors, with the water underneath. If you wait it too long, it's going to dry. So if that happens, add a little bit of clear coat, and this will give you a very nice uh, reflective effect. You can see how the, the rock is reflecting on the water. So I'm going to add a little bit of clear coat, and I'm going to do the same thing to the terrain up here. It doesn't take a lot, just a couple of strokes back and forth. Now, I was debating about this part but I really wanted to add it and this is going to be a piece of rock that is on the side of the waterfall. Now the reason I was debating on it is because usually this is something I would do while I was working on the waterfall and not afterwards. So as you noticed here on the bottom I added uh, using the straight edge I went back and I added the mist effect on it and this is a nice example to show you that it's never too late. There's not anything that you cannot correct with spray paints. You can always go back and add a little bit more. Uh, or you, if you decided that, you know what, I should have added this, you could still go back and add it. Using a little bit of white and blue, I added the highlights to a rock. Now with a little bit of black and our handy dandy sea sponge, I'm going to start working on some plant life. So I'm going to add a couple of strands using the grass technique to this piece of terrain that is closer to us. 
Now it's very simple to do. If you guys have seen my tutorials, you know that the grass technique is something that I use a lot because I create a lot of grass, grass-like sceneries and uh, landscapes. I really love painting landscapes, so you'll see me use this a lot. Notice what I'm doing here. I'm adding the grass strands on the edge of these rocks, on the edge of the terrain. And I always like to have the grass strands go into the water. All right, let's zoom up and let's add a couple of them right about here. Very easy to do, is quick strokes upward. Now you create your silhouette layer first and then uh, you can come back and add a little bit of highlights. You can make very colorful flowers in this manner as well. Right, using the side of the sponge, I'm creating these little these little strands that stick out. Perhaps you can make them a little more colorful to make them flowers. I want to keep them in the silhouette state though. Just gonna come like this. It just makes it a little more interesting. It, it draws the viewer in to say, hey, I wonder what kind of plant that is. Or hey, you know. That's exactly the kind of plant I would imagine in my terrain. All right. Well, crew, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's tutorial. It was a lot of fun making it. Let's take a closer look at it. Notice our terrain in the background. It's detailed. It's There's a lot of action going on with our waterfall, with the waves coming towards us, with the light beams hitting it and fading it into the background. All right. Well... Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, remember, keep those cans shaking.